Confession and forgiveness is an act that we participate with the Lord that is actually forming our hearts and transforming us in order to be a type of people that can live in the kingdom of heaven that is coming to earth. That can be a type of people that are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And I think it is as a witness to a world that is desperate to see the hope of the kingdom. Um, and so th there's something about participating in confession, participating in the act of forgiveness when it's hard, that it's doing something inside of us to form us, but it actually is also simultaneously is an act that's inviting other people outside to take part of the goodness that we've experienced. I, I would say in my experience, the softer my heart is, the more set up it is to um, have beautiful things growing in mm. it. Soft hearts don't as easily break. Yeah. It's hard, brittle hearts that are more True. prone to getting broken. Yeah. Shattered, yeah. So how do we do this? Because I think we've made a strong case to do it, but how do we do it? And so in the book, Forgiving What You Can't Forget, I decided that I needed a system. I'm a real systems person. <laughs> And so you can convince me to do something, but if I don't have a system to implement it, then it probably won't get done. So the best way, if my heart has been hardened about something, the best way for truth to break through is God's word mm. and me getting into God's word and letting God's word get into me starts to tenderize me in a way that very few other things can. And so mm -hmm. I decided to look up some verses that dealt with relational issues or topical issues from situations that I've been through and just list out some of those verses. And then in my journal, I decided to take myself through this system. And so maybe this will help. I started to write down, I wrote down these words, progress, suppress, digress, regress, confess, forgiveness. So it's six words. Mm. So first progress, I read the verse and I say, where am I making progress with this mm. verse? And typically I can think of some situation, some relationship where I am making progress with this verse. Then second, suppress. What is a situation where I'm feeling resistant to living out this verse? So then the next word I write is digress. Is there a situation where I'm taking steps backwards with this verse? So I'm not just feeling resistant to live it. Mm -hmm. I'm actually doing the opposite of what this verse says. Mm -hmm. And then regress, where am I living in rebellion against this verse? Mm -hmm. Well, once I take myself through those words, progress, suppress, digress, regress, now I have something to confess. And that so, flows right down. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Down to confess. Yes. And so yeah. then, now that I've written, now that I'm at the word confess, I'll say, now that I'm aware of some confessions I need to make, as I write these out, I will ask God to give me a spirit of humility in this process. And then the last step is forgiveness. Because oftentimes, as I'm confessing, I'll start having something come to my mind. Well, what, wait, God, wait. There's this person who isn't living out this verse with me. Mm -hmm. And so I say, okay, we'll tend to that in a minute. I'm gonna set that on the shelf and finish my confession. Now, the last word, forgiveness, where is someone not living this verse with me? This is an opportunity for, to, for me to forgive. It doesn't excuse their behavior. It frees me from being hindered by unforgiveness. And so once again, this is just a system that works for me. You guys may have your own system. You may have your own system and that's great, but I needed a way not just to say, Love yeah, I should confess or yeah, I should be practicing daily forgiveness. But if I really want to implement the daily cure for a heavy heart, I take myself into God's word and I say progress, suppress, digress, regress, confess, forgiveness. And doing that and writing that out in my journal has really helped me to practically apply what we've been talking about. And for about. me, if I get to apply just Jimbo here by himself, then that leads me to wholeness. Wow, at I the love end. that. Just a wholeness of yes, designed to be ever more moving toward wholeness, 
when it's time to clear back from childhood and unforgiveness keeps me in, in, in a place that's very painful and a place that's, a place that's toxic, and I want to embrace wholeness in my life. But I love your system, by the way. Thank you. That is in the book? That's in the book. Okay, because it flows down. And I just said, for me, so my personal application so is wholeness. Yeah, I long for wholeness. Man, do I long for it. And once you get past the confession and forgiveness, I love adding the word wholeness. But now you can go right back up to the top of the chart. And now I'm making progress. Ross, rinse, and repeat. Right? That's right. There you, you go. There you go. See? Look how you Look did that. that. Yeah. Any last thoughts, Joel? You know, I just think about, uh, and not to get too cheesy here, but since we're going with all the, the, the wholeness and confess, I think that when you're whole and you've done this practice, it puts you in a posture and a position to experience God's goodness. And I, I really that. think that's what we're desperate for. I we agree. We want to experience the goodness of God. And what if when we confess, when we do acts of forgiveness, that it positions us in a posture to truly experience the goodness of God. Holiness, even. Mm -hmm. Seriously, it's not cheesy, mm -hmm. even into that, and I long for that one, too. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.